Hey friends, it's Triscuit, and welcome back to another episode of the A Modular Video Library, the series that takes a look at the wide range of modules available for the A Modular system. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the fantastic WASP filter, giving a general overview before diving into some demo patches. Before we begin, A Modular is a small but ever growing system. So if you find this video useful, be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, or consider supporting me on Patreon. The videos of this series can be found in a playlist on my channel and can be viewed in any order. Green thumbnails are used for official Tangible Waves modules and pink thumbnails are used to cover things like third party modules. With all of that said, let's dive in and have a look at Wasp Filter. Now, you might have already heard of a WASP filter in other modular synthesizers, and rightly so, because it's a very popular type of filter and it dates all the way back to the 70s. According to the A modular documentation on this module, the WASP filter abuses digital chips in an analog way, leading to the characteristic sound of its filter type. In this module, Vactrals, like it says here, are used to control the filter frequency. Now, I have no idea what that means, and honestly, I don't really care because all I know is that I absolutely love this filter. I love the way it sounds. It's got real signature and characteristic to it that can sort of be replicated with other filters. Um, but yeah, I just don't have another filter and any other piece of gear that sounds quite like this. When you hear it, you'll probably think, oh my goodness, this filter is perfect for creating acid music. So just going over some of the inputs and outputs, we have an in H and an in L, so high and low. High is for sort of higher frequencies and low is for lower frequencies. And it also adds a little bit of drive onto that low end as well. We've got two CV controls underneath that. And both of those are for controlling the filter cutoff. We've also got bus CV and bus control like we get on a lot of other modules here just for incoming MIDI. And then as far as outputs go, we've got three outputs for the low pass, three outputs for the band pass, and two outputs for the high pass. So let's just do something really basic here. I'm gonna grab a square wave from the two OSC drive over here, plug it into in L just for a bit more drive in the low end. And we'll take the low pass frequency and plug it into our mixer. Cool. So I'm just going to turn all of these settings down here and we'll slowly introduce the filter. Great. Now let's introduce a little bit of resonance. If we have the resonance turned up quite high, really just getting that high resonance output. Now, of course, we've got a high frequency input as well. So if we just turn this back up and have a listen, we can hear that it's a little bit quieter and that's because the drive is only applied to the low input. I'm going to plug this back into the low input here and let's plug in a envelope. I'm just going to turn this down for the time being. So we'll take an envelope out and put it into the CV control here. And just to trigger this envelope, we'll take the end of that and plug it into the gate. Cool, so that's activated now. Now we'll crank this back up. And at the moment, we're not hearing anything. And that's because we need to turn up the CV influence. So that's really cool and all, but what I might do is we'll take this out and let's hook up the same oscillator to a VCA. We'll take the same envelope and trigger our VCA with that. And then we'll take the VCA out and hook it into our WASP filter. Cool. 
cool. And maybe just so that we've got a bit of a pattern going, I'll just use the Euclid grid down here to trigger our envelope. Cool. Now let's bring our filter down. Pretty neat stuff. So we can hear that our filter is closing along with the length of our envelope. Now something else that's really cool about this is that we have this second CV input down here. So we could take anything else, uh, for example, we'll take the triangle wave of this LFO down here, which we can see is represented by this top yellow light fading in and out. So it's moving quite slowly. And now we can hear that opening and closing in conjunction with this light. Let's actually make it go a little bit slower. Now we're hearing like a fair amount of change over time. Which I think is really, really neat. I'm going to remove those for now and show one other really cool thing uh, that I particularly like to do with this. So we'll remove the VCAs and uh, let's keep that LFO in there. And let's take a maybe a square wave LFO, this top one that's moving kind of fast. And we'll plug that into our top CV control. And then let's take our oscillator and feed it into low. Cool, maybe something like that. It's barely audible. But it sounds pretty cool. So let's take the output of this module and maybe we'll use the band pass or, or actually let's go a high pass into our delay module over here. And then we'll hook up a delay module into our mixer. That's pretty neat. And what I want is maybe some random modulation to the delay module as well. Uh, we could use a bunch of different things for that. I'm probably just going to create a random pattern on the castle drum down here. And then we'll take the pattern output, which is just like a random square wave, really. Let's plug it into the CV control of the delay module. Now we've almost got like a sort of watery texture thing happening. That almost sounds like horses <laughs> running along a cobbled street. Maybe we'll speed up the rate of this. These are all really cool and really useful sounds that we can get out of this module by just playing around with different things. Let's maybe plug it into the bandpass filter.
that's pretty cool already. We could also take that output and let's plug it into a SV filter, for example. Now we'll take the in low. And let's take a high pass version of that into our mixer. really really cool sounds and really really cool textures so not really just for acid after all i suppose if we turn up our oscillator we get some really cool alien like sounds I love messing around with oscillators and um, sort of filter types and stuff this way, just to come up with cool, interesting sounds that I can then sample and use in other projects. Let's uh, do something else a little weird. Maybe we'll take the RBSS random voltage generator down here. Let's clock it. And we'll plug it into an attenuator. And then we'll take an output of that and plug it into the pitch. Almost sounds like violinists warming up in an orchestra, but recorded to tape and slightly reversed. I mean, this is what Modular is all about. <laughs> Just creating really cool sounds that would be difficult to make with any other synthesizer. down the right of the RBSS. As you can see, I'm really just messing around at this point. So yeah, I mean, uh, sorry for sort of stretching that out for a really long time. I just kind of wanted to demonstrate like some different use cases for this filter, because I think that at this point, it's fairly obvious that we can just, you know, hook up envelopes and VCAs and control filters with LFOs and whatnot. I guess if I were to just go over one more thing, it would be a extremely common use case when dealing with filters like this. I'll take a square wave output into a VCA, trigger the VCA with an envelope, trigger the envelope with the Euclid grid down here, 
and then take the envelope out, hook it into our wasp filter and take the wasp filter output into our mixer. Well, let's just turn things down a little bit here to start with. Finally, we're going to take a noise oscillator, plug it into a sample and hold, and we're going to trigger that sample and hold. Um, let's go with the exact same trigger as our envelope. Now we'll take the sample and hold output here and we'll plug it into our wasp filter. So I've got the CV influence turned all the way down at the moment. And if we clock this and turn this up, maybe we'll just make a slightly more interesting sequence. Let's see what happens when we turn up the influence of our sample and hold. So we can see that every time this light lights up, we're hearing a change in the frequency. Now this is really cool because we're taking the random information from a noise oscillator, plugging it into a sample and hold and triggering it with the same sequence. Let's take that out and we'll use this yellow sequence down here to just trigger it once at the very beginning. So now we can hear that the filter is changing every time the pattern resets. Just increase this. That's pretty neat. Let's maybe plug that into our delay module. We'll turn the feedback down and we'll take the delay output and plug it into our mixer. around with this influence just to get a bit more control and straight away our bass patch is already way more interesting than it was previously we could then take our really slow LFO down here and we'll plug it into CV2 Now, if we find that's a little bit too much, we can just plug that into an attenuator and control the CV value even further. filter down a bit. Pretty neat stuff. If I were to use my deluge over here and I'll just create a new kit track. Place down four kicks. And I'll just use this sidechain feature built into the deluge just because it's a little easier to set up. Uh, this isn't clocked though. <laughs> So we'll just take the clock from the deluge and um, let's make sure that we're clocking our Euclid grid with that. And then we'll make sure that we've got reset up to stop. Cool. Let's turn up the rate. 
um, whoops, sorry. I am getting a little bit carried away here. I do tend to sort of ramble on when I'm patching um, just because I'm exploring just like you guys are. There we go. Cool, so let's turn up some sidechain on this track. Add a bit of reverb to the entire thing. I think that you can see sort of where I'm going with this, like using this in conjunction with other pieces of gear or within other modules that you've got into your rack and just using these steps to slowly evolve your filter, sort of shaping over time, separate to like what your pitch is doing and everything. It can just create really cool, unique sounding results that uh, can sometimes be more difficult to create on other synthesizers. Um, but you know, it just adds a lot more variety to your patch. So now if we were to go in and start patching like different drums and oscillators and whatnot, you've already got a really interesting sound happening underneath, which is gonna keep your listeners engaged. Let's activate the compressor and stuff that I've got built on the Zoya here. I could definitely see myself turning this into a little bit of a Psytrance track. Anyways, I think that's all that I have to say about the Wasp filter module. It's the filter I reach for the most. The SV filter is very cool as well, but I definitely find myself reaching for the Wasp filter more often than not. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section and I'll do my best to get back to you. Hit the like if you like, and if you don't, tell me why, please subscribe. Check me out on Patreon and thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoy these three demo patches.